God saves many souls to work here in Shreveport. Not only saves, but he gives fruit that remains. I believe that's God's will. I know sometimes he puts people in our life and we'll never see them again. And God uses us maybe to reach them and share the gospel. I thank you for it. I believe he wants to give us fruit that remains. Don't you? Yes, sir. Romans chapter number 16. And I'm going to start reading in verse number 3. says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Verse 3, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. We don't, we, we don't know a whole lot about these, this couple here. Priscilla and Aquila, uh, we do know that they most likely got saved in Rome and left Rome after uh, Claudius' edict that the Jews were to leave the city of Rome. We know that they were tent makers. We know that they abode with Paul. We yeah. know that they uh, they had missionary efforts yeah. with the Apostle Paul uh, but it seems like you can go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 16 and a very familiar, a very uh, a similar passage of Scripture is recorded uh, where Paul is talking about the church, uh, the church that is in their house, uh, that is in Priscilla and Aquila's house. It seems like they are a people uh, that had church at houses, in their home, they they started churches in their houses. They uh, they fostered ground root churches, uh, and they they birthed them into their house. Uh, and if the Lord would help me here tonight, I want to preach on having church. Uh, at the home, having church right. at the home. Uh, right. In the New Testament, the Greek word ecclesia, we know, we Bible readers know, it's only mentioned uh, twice in the Gospels. Uh, it's only mentioned twice in the Gospels, but in the, the book of Acts, uh, it, it's recorded 23 times this word uh, ecclesia. And of course, the Pauline writings, uh, where he is writing the epistles to the church, uh, it is mentioned four. 46 times uh, this word ecclesia and of those times that he records uh, that word in the Hebrew the ecclesia we can draw uh, three uh, three distinct points uh, of references from that first and foremost uh, it is talking about uh, the universal church uh, aren't you glad that we're not the only ones uh, going to heaven uh, aren't you glad that we're not the only one we haven't locked it up uh, there are people that are living for God the best that they know how uh, all over this world uh, contrary to what uh, what popular opinion might say uh, that Christianity is fading uh, and Christianity is dying uh, there are Christians in every creed uh, every nation, every tongue uh, that profess Jesus Christ uh, is not only Savior uh, but is the Lord of their life uh, I'm thankful uh, that we when I got saved, I got put into uh, the universal church. Uh, number two, uh, it's talking about uh, the local assembly. I still believe uh, in the local assembly. I believe uh, you ought to put yourself uh, under the authority uh, of a pastor. Can you say amen? Amen. Uh, the first fruits uh, ought to go into the storehouse uh, where you're fed. Uh, I believe the tithe uh, is not an opinion. I believe uh, it is a doctrinal standard uh, that is backed up by the word of the Lord uh, that the first 
first fruits uh, go into the storehouse. Uh, go into that place uh, that fed you. Not Jimmy Swaggart. Uh, not some TV evangelist. Uh, but where your soul is being fed. Uh, I believe uh, you ought to put yourself. Uh, I believe this ought to be the place uh, where you're at. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Uh, if Brother Stacy is your pastor uh, and this is your church. Uh, I believe uh, you ought to take onus of this church. Uh, you ought to be concerned uh, when the Spirit of God's not moving. Uh, it's not just the man of God's fault. Uh, you're not going to fall out with me, are you? Uh, I believe the church ought to take onus. Uh, if it's a dead dry service, uh, we ought to have some responsibility. Uh, did I not uh, fast and pray enough uh, for my local assembly? Uh, I believe in the local assembly. Uh, but third, uh, and this is where I want to preach uh, that word ecclesia oftentimes uh, in the New Testament uh, is talking about the individual Christian uh, where you are uh, it does not matter uh, but it's who you are uh, and if you profess the name of Christ uh, you ought to depart from iniquity uh, he ought yeah. to be the Lord uh, of your life I uh, that he ought to be uh, he ought to have the preeminence in my life uh, no matter where I I'm at, uh, no matter who sees me, uh, no matter what's going on, uh, I believe uh, that a churchman uh, ought to be a part uh, and a member of the church uh, when nobody sees them. Uh, when we're not uh, at some camp meeting uh, dressed up in our finest, uh, when we're not at youth rally uh, dressed up at our finest, uh, I believe we ought to be uh, a person uh, that is blood bought, uh, child of God. Uh, I believe uh, we ought to be the church uh, no matter where we're at uh, no matter what's going on uh, no matter what the circumstances are uh, we don't have a choice uh, to be a church member at church uh, and a church member uh, and something else uh, outside of the church uh, we ought to be in the church uh, can you say amen, amen. We ought to be a member uh, of the church uh, of the living God uh, oh, come on here now uh, we ought to be a member years ago, Thomas Jefferson penned a letter, and in that letter he talked about a wall of separation between the church and the state. He was using a metaphor, but people have grabbed a hold of that, trying to hinder us, and trying to tell us that we can be in the church in these four walls, but Come on, once we get on Jesus. the job, Come on. once we get at school, once we get in the grocery store, uh, we ought to keep our affections uh, and our convictions uh, inside the church. Uh, I mean, they put a lot of stock uh, in one line written by Thomas Jefferson, uh, but they don't want to take heed uh, to what George Washington said uh, when he said morality and religion uh, are the essential pillars of the church. Uh, in other words, uh, if morality and in Christianity uh, were to fall uh, if one of those pillars were to fall uh, civic society itself would fall uh, I don't know I don't only think uh, that George Washington was a Christian uh, but as I look at America uh, he might have been a prophet uh, but I'm telling you friend uh, when you look at the letter of Jefferson uh, he was not talking uh, about we cannot uh, interfere with the government uh, of our land uh, but what he was saying was uh, that the government has no authority uh, over the church. Uh, in other words, the government uh, ought not meddle uh, with the church's convictions, uh, but we've allowed uh, this false idea of separation of church and state uh, to hinder us uh, in our worship. Uh, we've allowed it to come in among us uh, and hinder us, uh, and even, uh, even inside the church. Uh, oh, you've heard it said, uh, man, we really had church tonight. Uh, we really had a move of God tonight and you get to talking to them and what they really were talking about was their favorite preacher preached it down but that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about having church even if your favorite preacher ain't preaching you say preacher you're not my favorite preacher well guess what I'm not my favorite preacher either but I still want to have a move of God I still want to have the power of God in my life life, uh, in my home, uh, no matter who's preaching, uh, no matter who's singing, uh, no matter who's got the mic, I want to have a move of God. Hallelujah. Me and 
man there was at a church, and uh, there was this this couple there that it seemed like when when somebody else was preaching, somebody else was singing, they didn't have a care in the world about how the church service was going to go. But man, when they got up there to sing and they got that mic in their hand, I mean, it was, whoa. All of a sudden, man, I was like, man, I want to get a hold of that mic. It's got some anointing tonight. <laughs> and it can move that guy. I'm going to be honest with you. It started affecting the way I worshiped when I started hearing them. Because they wouldn't get with nobody else until I was in a prayer room. Until me and my wife were in a prayer room. And the Holy Ghost come down. And as God is my witness, He let me know I was to have church. And He would take care of everything else. And I tried my best. No matter who was singing. No matter who was preaching. If they was preaching the Word of God, I was going to say amen. If they were singing and they were talking about the blood and about the power of God and they were singing the songs that we agree with, I was going to back them no matter what you know why because I want to be a member of the church I want God to be pleased with my worship I don't want it to be said man brother Holden he really got anointed when he had the mic but he was dry as cracker juice when somebody else preached but I want him to be able to say it don't matter if he's got the mic or not he's pushing for an altar he's moving for an altar Andrew Murray's a writer that I love to read. I'm sure Brother Stacy's got several of his books. He wrote on sanctification and holiness. He was a he was an African missionary, a missionary to Africa. He wrote very many books on separation, a deeper life, a deeper walk. He wrote a book on the home. It's a good book. But he, he had 11 children, five sons, went on to be preachers. Five of his daughters went on to marry preachers. That next generation, his grandchildren, ten boys, were called into the ministry. In all, there were 13 missionaries in that second generation. Something tells me, Brother Stacy, that Brother Andrew Murray didn't just have church when he was at a minister's conference. Something tells me that he didn't have church when he was preaching to a missionary alliance. Something tells me the man of God had church when it was just him and his wife and all of his babies. For you're never going to get them in, my friend. You're never going to get it to a cross to your children. If it's not real, if that's not something that's in your home, if it's not something that you take with every part of your life, it's not just when we have the mic. It's not just when I'm preaching a meeting. I want to know my God. You know why? Because I've got girls following along behind. And I want them to know we got to have a move of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. church at the house. Yes, Having church, Brother Jonathan, at the house. When I'm not preaching, yes, sir. When, when things ain't going my way, you know what I did every morning? When my transmission went out, All right. now I was low. I mean, I was disgusted. I was aggravated. But every morning, I got up and I did the exact same thing I do every morning. Barring some crazy thing happening, I read my Bible because I've got to have a move of God. I've got to have a word of God. Oh, Come on. Way to it, I'd realize I was aggravated. Why is this happening? And I'd have to start over in another chapter. I have to read it again. But I want to have a move of God. I said, Come on, I want to have Jesus. A move of God. You want to know what's going to make camp meetings better and our youth camps better and revival and youth rally better? It's when we have a move of God in yes. our home. When we've got the presence of God yes. in our home. Oh, when we're not fussing and biting, bickering and yelling, but we're having devotions. We're having the Spirit of God in our house. You know me. 
I know I've told him before, but before Paris ever got the Holy Ghost, she got a touch of it, laying flat on her back when she was six years old, as me and Mama were just praying, praying goodnight prayers, but suddenly the power of God came down, and I looked over there, and she had stammered lips, and about two months later, she went through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, friend, we need to have church at the House. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. Oh, I believe that. I, uh, I moved to Oklahoma and uh, took a job up there. It was going to offer more freedom to preach. Plus, it was my one of my lifelong best friends was buying the company out, and I wanted to help him out, give him some experience. He could rely upon. So we moved up there to Oklahoma. But Douglas is a great preacher. He's a great youth camp preacher. And he's a great preacher, period. He's become a good friend of mine. But when I got up there, Brother Ryan and I, the devil attacked my mind. You missed it. I mean, I hadn't been preaching too long. I pulled myself out from under the shadow and the, the teaching and just the... Uh, the experience of Brother Lloyd Shoecraft. And I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've been across the country. There are very few, if any, preachers that are more doctrinally sound, I feel, than Brother Lloyd Shoecraft. And so the devil started tormenting my mind. You've missed it. And, and I know God is a God of mercy and a God of grace. But I have always felt that it is so important to be in the will of God that if you take one step outside of the will, you can ruin your life. I believe it that strong. You can ruin your family. I believe it that strong. And the devil started using that. And he started tormenting my mind. It was a Wednesday night. I was supposed to preach. I hadn't told my family. I hadn't told anybody what I was going through. Every day I went to work. You missed it. You crazy. You lost your mind. You're going to lose your marriage. You're going to lose your ministry. You're going to lose out with God. That's how low I was. I was fighting it. I went, I got home that day. I was supposed to preach that night. I had no idea what I was going to preach. I walked in as low as I could possibly be in my living room. And there in the middle of my living room, my girls were on the couch watching as their mother shouted all over the living room in the power of God. I walked into the Shekinah glory of God in my home. I said in my home, we need it more than anything. Can I tell you, friend, if you can only get lost in the Holy Ghost while somebody else is around, I question your relationship with God. If you can only shout when somebody else sees you, I question how great your devotion is. We ought to be able to shout when nobody else is around. I've done it before, praying in church, and all of a sudden, I felt like running. You know what I did? That's exactly what I did. I ran, and the power of God came down. Yes, sir. Having church at my house. Yeah. The Bible says, let me just read in, in Proverbs, chapter number 15. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Verse number 6. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. Let me ask you something. Do you think he's going to overlook our house? Do you think he's going to overlook? I'm not perfect. I'm not saying me and my wife don't disagree. I'm not. But she's been proven wrong before. I'm sure she'll be proven wrong again. There are times we disagree. But oh, I don't ever lose my love for her in that disagreement. I don't ever fly off the handle in that disagreement. There are some things that she's learned 
that there are times when she can see it on my countenance. Just leave him alone. Just leave him alone. We'll talk about it later. And so God's given her wisdom in that regard. But I don't believe in acting all super spiritual when everybody's around, when my preacher brethren around, and getting in my car and talking to my wife like she's a dog, talking to my children like they don't matter. That's not the kind of religion we need, friend. We need religion that's at the church, yes, but it's at the home. I said it's at the home. He, he condemns the people and he says God was not in all of their thoughts. You know what that tells me? If we're not in church, we ought to be thinking about having church. If we're in a valley, we ought to be thinking about when the next time we can get on the mountaintop. The next time we can get into the presence of God. I remember Aunt Paula thinking the first time I was at church and Danielle was holding Micah and the power of God fell on her. <coughs> she was holding little Micah. Micah's about two or so, maybe three. And she started shouting. That little girl in her hands. Man, Micah was in love with them little, them little rides there at Walmart. You and you plug in, put a quarter in. She got it for free that night. I mean, she felt like she was on a ride. And she was laughing. She was having a good old time. While mama was lost in the presence of the God. And you know what I thought, Aunt Paul? I thought about going home to Mama Holden's house as a sinner, sleeping in that little spare bedroom for a couple nights visiting that mall. Oh, I miss her. But I think about the times I woke up and nobody knew what was going on. Nobody knew where she was at. Nobody knew that there was nobody else around. It was just a sinner boy in the other room and Memo and the power of God in the other room. And as a sinner boy, Brother Stacy, I said, man, I I gotta get out of here. This memo's having church at the house. My friend, if we've ever had a need for somebody to have a move of God in their home, it's in 2019.